Nuclear energy makes about 20% of U.S. electricity and has for nearly 30 years. The South Texas project provides power to Houston, San Antonio, and Austin. This is a steam electric plant. It's pretty similar to any other steam electric plant, be it coal or other fossil fuel. It is just generating heat. We're using a nuclear source to generate the heat that simply makes steam. Steam turns a turbine, turbine turns a generator, makes electricity. It's all that same standard process. The unique part of it is, is we use nuclear energy to generate the heat that makes the steam. This is the control room of Unit 2 of the South Texas Project, currently operating at full power, generating about 1,350 megawatts of electricity going out to the, to the state of Texas. 24-7, 365. Every day. Yeah. All day, all night, whether the wind blows, whether the sun shines, whether <laughs> it rains, no matter what, that plant's running, generating, generating power, going out to, and this plant produces enough power for about a million homes, yeah. just this one unit. So just how efficient is this facility in terms of a efficiency or a capacity factor? We achieve a you know, capacity factor of 98.7%. 98.7%. That's so got to be the most efficient power plant and, in the world. That's, it, it is. Actually, is it where we, we currently hold the, the, the U.S. record for uh, uh, capacity factor on operating these plants. And in a CO2 sense, it's clean. It's clean. We generate no carbon dioxide emissions while we're, while we're operating this plant. What is the cost of put a big facility like this in place. The plant's expensive. The price for a two-unit site is somewhere on the order of $10 billion. Huge, large investment. But as, as an overall, when you put it over the, the life expectancy of the unit, the 40 years plus that the units will operate, and look at the overall cost of power, nuclear power is still at a very, very low cost. While Unit 1 was fully operational, Unit 2 was undergoing some maintenance. We're in a situation now where the reactor's down. We're in a refueling outage, and during this refueling outage, we're also doing a, a number of major um, maintenance activities. One in particular is we're replacing the, uh, the reactor head. Uh, and what you, what you see when you look down, I mean, you're, you're looking straight down here into the, uh, this is the reactor vessel. You're looking straight down to the bottom. It has no fuel in it right now. Okay. And so you're just looking straight down through water. You're looking through about 60 feet of water. Why put it underwater? Water provides cooling. Okay. And primarily in this in this case, it's there for shielding. Because right now there's no fuel in it, so there's nothing to cool. But it's it's shielding because down in the very bottom, of this things are, are quite radioactive. You've stored 20 to 25 years of spent fuel from this facility here. We take that fuel assembly out of the reactor, and we store it in the used fuel pool. What are some of the risks of this? I mean, of that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, virt virtually none. And it's, it's sitting here under, you know, 45 feet of water, cooled, shielded by the water. And the ultimate disposal or reprocessing of used fuel is just not a technological issue. It's strictly a political decision as to have, a, the, you know, the will to move forward with, with nuclear energy and, and, the, and the closing the, uh, the fuel cycle. So our two reactors are... In the backdrop, yeah. You were just talking about over here, they're actually breaking ground. What's going to go on over there? Yeah, we're doing some pre-construction activities for our new units, units three and four. Uh, they actually are scheduled to come online, commercial operation in 2016 and 2017. And they're going to be similar size as the two you've got? Yeah, it'll, it'll actually double the size of this facility and make it the largest nuclear power facility in the country. What's allowing that to happen? We need baseload power. Yeah. And your options when it comes to baseload power are coal, natural gas, and nuclear. And for 30 years, we haven't built nuclear. And when you look at an issue like climate change, you realize this is the only carbon-free source of baseload power we have. After the Fukushima nuclear accident, STP canceled their plans for the new reactors. And the future of nuclear in the United States seems unclear. But if we don't build new reactors, what will replace our old ones when we need to decommission them? Coal or natural gas?